Hello guys, welcome back to GPU Tester. Today we're going to be comparing the RTX 4060 against the RX 6800 XT. You can see the specifications of each of the card on the screen right now, and I'll also provide you with the specifications for the test bench. So, the first game we're going to benchmark is The Last of Us Part 2. In this, we're going to be running it at the Ultra preset at 1440p resolution. Getting into the game, we can see that the AMD RX 6800 XT manages an average of 72 FPS compared to the 4060's 30 FPS. An average of 30 FPS means that it drops below 30 FPS every now and then. And I think it's not really that great of an experience. One other thing that I would like to mention is that the 4060 is extremely limited by its VRAM. We can see that by checking the VRAM usage of each of the cards. The 6800 XT uses almost 12.5 GB of VRAM compared to the 7.5 on the 4060. Next on the list is Starfield. We're using the Ultra preset at 1440p and we've turned off any upscaling the game might use. In this, the 4060 actually does slightly better uh, compared to how it did in The Last of Us Part 2. The VRAM usage is also under control and it doesn't need to use much RAM to make up for that. The 4060 averages an FPS of 40 compared to 69 on the 6800 XT. Okay, no bounty. The third game we have on our list is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. We're using the high preset at 1440p with no upscaling or ray tracing. In this again, the 4060 does seem to do slightly better but it's still not enough to get a 60 plus FPS experience. One thing this shows us is that 4060 is not really a card suited for 1440p. It's more a card suited for 1080p. An average of 44 FPS on the 4060 means it is acceptable performance but not really great. Again, for me the benchmark for great performance is getting 60 plus, which the 6800 XT manages to achieve. Fourth game we have on our list is a Plague Tale Requiem. We're also playing this at Ultra preset at 1440p. And we can see that the 4060 is dropping into the mid 30s. That means again that it isn't really a card suited for 1440p and it would fare much better at 1080p. That said, the performance at 1440p is not terrible and if you lock it to 30 fps let's say you might be able to enjoy that experience the 6800 xt manages an average of 76 fps which is great performance for 1440p You're sure you remember where this florist is? Hmm. Next game on the list is Forza Horizon 5. Forza Horizon actually runs pretty decently on both cards and actually runs surprisingly well on the 4060 averaging an FPS of 112. The 6800 XT tops that with almost 70% more FPS at 181. That said, both the cards run the game amazingly and you won't have any problems running it with either of the cards.
Next game we have on our list is Need for Speed Heat. We're gonna be using the Ultra preset and running it at 1440p. As you can see, this is one more game where the 4060 actually does manage 60 plus FPS at 1440p and runs the game pretty well. The 6800 XT tops that with almost an average of 136 FPS and it provides nearly a high refresh rate experience. That said, both these cards provide great performance and you cannot go wrong with either of these if Need for Speed is the game you want to play. Next game we have on our list is Spider-Man Remastered. We're going to be running it at 1440p using the very high preset. We're not going to be using any ray tracing or upscaling. As you can see, both these cards run the game pretty well and what's surprising is that the lead 6800 XT had over the 4060 in the previous titles, it seems to have lessened quite a bit. With an average of 95 FPS, the 4060 is doing an amazing job keeping up with the 6800 XT which has an average of 115 FPS. That translates to about a 20% gain in performance which is quite a bit less. All units, prisoners are opening fire from stolen vehicles. Next game we have is Uncharted Lost Legacy. In this, again, the 46 is an average of more than 60 FPS. I did mention how it was not a card suited for 1440p anymore, but that doesn't mean there aren't any games that it can run in 1440p. Older games or games that are actually well optimized may run pretty good on the 4060. Now we have The Witcher 3. We're using the next gen update and we're gonna be running it at ultra preset at 1440p without any upscale. We're back to where we started with the 4060 getting mid 40s average whereas the 6800 XT is getting mid 70s. Both of these cards provide acceptable performance with the 6800 XT giving you 60 plus all the time whereas the 4060 only giving you 30 plus all of the time. The 1% lose the show that. Tomb Raider is going to be the next game we benchmark and we are running it at the highest preset at 1440p. Forty sixty surprisingly gives really good performance in this title with an average of over 90 FPS. Tomb Raider is actually a very well optimized game and that can be seen with how many FPS you can get with the 6800 XT which provides over 150 FPS most of the time. Next game on our list is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. 
will be running it at 1440p ultra preset. I did mention how the 4060 was not a card that was much capable at 1440p but I think I'll have to retract that statement because even in Assassin's Creed Valhalla it does pretty well actually. It manages to get an average FPS of 73 compared to 120 on the 6800 XT. Although there is the fact that Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a few years old now. Moving on to Doom Eternal, we'll be playing this at 1440p Ultra Nightmare preset. Like always, this just runs flawlessly. No matter which card I play this game on, it gives me amazing performance. Same is the case with 4060 and 6800 XT, where we get to see a high refresh rate experience on both of them. Especially the 6800 XT giving me more than 300 FPS on average. That will also wrap up our benchmark. I hope you enjoyed the video. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will try to answer all of them. And thank you for watching.